welcome to Christ Church's online service. Uh, you can find uh, the bulletin on our website, or you can follow along in the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, we're so glad you joined us. If you're a visitor with us, if it's your first time here, I ask you to take a second to fill out our online visitor cards so we can say thanks for joining us. And you can learn more about what our church is doing by checking us out on online or signing up to get the Chronicle, the weekly email. And again, if you're in a position to continue to give to Christ Church, we ask you to do so by either giving online or by mailing in a check. Our service begins on page 355, if you're following in your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And And blessed blessed be His His kingdom, kingdom, now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray this one together. Almighty God, to you all all hearts are open, all desires known, and from from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also also with with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. As he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child, now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh. For she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now join me in reading Psalm appointed for this Sunday. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord? for all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for the righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might dare actually to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I've been trying to use this time of social distancing and, and sheltering at home uh, to do some good. I've actually tried to get back into shape. While I've been busier in some ways than I've ever been during this time as we're trying to figure out how to do church in, in new ways, there have been chunks of time that I used to not have. For example, when I get my kids ready for school in the morning, when they weren't going to school, all of a sudden I had this little chunk of time. So I decided I was going to exercise more. And while I couldn't go to the gym, I had to get creative. I got into kayaking and I would run. And I found these videos online I've been doing. They're these 15-minute ab exercise videos with this. She seems, uh, she's a young woman who looks in some ways like maybe a Eastern European gymnast. She's just all muscle. And she does this really hard workout video. It's so hard, by the way, I've never been able to finish one. In fact, I normally only get about halfway. I get about eight minutes in, I tap out, and she's still exercising. And when it starts to hurt, and when it starts to burn, she always tries to encourage you. And she'll say things like, like the cliche, no pain, no gain. Or if it's burning, that means it's working. Or she'll say things like, I know it's hard, but imagine yourself in the bikini this summer. I think most of her audience is women. And so she's implying that somehow through our hard work and through our pain, something good is going to come out of that. Is that what we believe? Do we believe that somehow through suffering, that something good comes out of it? And a similar question, do we think that God wants us to suffer so that good will come out of it? On Good Friday, I preached that, that, that Jesus' suffering on the cross was just part of what it meant to be human. For we all know pain. Even the most blessed life knows the reality of grief and suffering. In some ways, it's unavoidable. Not in some ways. It is unavoidable in what it means to be human. I don't think God wants us to suffer but we will, at times, have pain and struggles in our life. And how we respond to them and how we go through them is what God wants us to know. You see, those struggling, that, that those, those challenges can either beat us down and make us less than we are, or can instead draw us closer to the love of God. So Paul, Paul knows what it means to suffer. He's not speaking about this 
from some theoretical truth. He's lived it in his life. I mean, Paul was arrested and beaten and turned on by his friends. Paul was shipwrecked and made sick. And Paul will eventually be killed because of his faith. Paul knows what it's like. And so what he says to the people when he's writing his letter to the Romans, he tells them that because of our faith, we can even boast in our suffering. Because he says, suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint. Why doesn't it disappoint? Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We, we can face the challenges of this time because we also then have hope. So Paul says, so suffering produces endurance. And that makes sense, right? Like what we go through builds up in us a strength as we overcome it. And that, that endurance then leads to character. It can shape our hearts in a new way. And that character brings us to hope. A hope that what we are going through is not the last of the story. That God's promise for us, that God's grace for us, that God's love for us will bring us to another side of that, whether in this world or the next. And that hope we have in God does not disappoint because He has poured His love into our hearts. Paul is talking about the reality of suffering, but he is not saying that God wants you to suffer, and he is not saying that you should remain in suffering. This is not be okay with whatever you're going through. Just just bide your time. This is not an allowance or an acceptance of things that are not right in your world. This is not complacency. So there's something that you can do to alleviate that. Or that's to reach out to somebody in love. Or whether that's to start counseling. Or whether that is to try a different approach to life. Or to no longer accept the way that somebody's treating you that is not healthy. We would do that. Because God wants us to move through suffering and into that hope. But also, dear friends, as people who are people of God's love, and that love leads people to hope, we then embody hope for others by helping to alleviate their suffering. We are called by God to respond to people who are suffering and to provide them hope to heal that which we can. So, last Friday, when we give away 10,000 pounds of food to people who are hungry, or through the work that I'm asking us to start, where we're going to talk about issues of race and reconciliation, or through the kindness that we show to the people around us, to the grace, to the mercy, to the love, We respond to where people are and we bring them into that hope. So hope comes from the character of our heart and the character of our heart comes through endurance and that endurance is rooted in the challenge we have in this world but through all of it. We are loved by God and our hope comes from Him. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our our families, families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth your true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. For For all who who serve serve God God in his church. church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray this day for all those suffering from the coronavirus or any other illness for those who worry about their families and friends and about their jobs and livelihoods, and for all those at the forefront of our health care and public safety and food service systems. We pray for the sick and hospitalized in our parish and community. We pray for all those on our hearts and minds this day, those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord God, this day we pray for Linda and Laura and Cindy and Betty and Puddy and Bob, Brent, Nancy, Susan, Phyllis, Dee, Susan, Jay, Scott, Hannah, Seal, Lisa, Kate, Liz, Wood, Caroline, Helen, and Bill. Hear us, Lord, for For your your mercy mercy is is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And And praise praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put put their their trust trust in in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most Most merciful merciful Father. Father. In In your your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, sins, known known and unknown. unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us with your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Good morning, Christ Church. Three quick announcements. First of all, the next of our mobile food pantries is going to be this coming Friday, June the 19th. Uh, we'll give away 10,000 pounds of food to over 500 people. To sign up for that, you can email Honey Harris. You can find her email and more information in the Chronicle. Also, I want you to note that we've shifted the schedule for in-person worship services. Um, where we, we were doing communion and prayer at, some, at certain times. We're now shifting and we're adding back in a sermon and the readings. Um, but we're doing those services at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, 5 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, and noon on Wednesday. Um, and again, we're having limits to those. So you have to sign up ahead of time. And also, we're, there's other restrictions. For example, everyone will be wearing masks. And you can find out more about that in the email that we sent out. Uh, but I want to remind you that we're still considering this service on YouTube and Facebook, our primary service. But we're offering those in-person services, again, on Sunday at 8 a.m., Sunday at 5 p.m., and Wednesday at noon. And finally, as I preached about last Sunday, I'm asking for Christ Church to do some, have some conversations and look at our own hearts for what we can do to eradicate racism and bring about true equality for all of God's children. And what is it in us that, that, that may need to shift or change? If you haven't listened to that sermon, I encourage you to do so from last Sunday. Um, I've decided that most of our conversations about this need to be done in person. It's just different talking to a computer screen than it is when you're looking at somebody in the face. But we're going to do what I'm calling foundational work ahead of time. And that's going to start this coming Wednesday. We're going to start a three-week class on the history of race in our local context. We're going to start with the history of race in Pensacola. Um, and Tiniane Broughton, a local historian, is going to join me. And then we're going to look at history in the church and then history in Christ Church in particular. Um, and so I encourage you to join me this, this coming Wednesday. It'll be a great class. So join us this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And you can get a link for that in the, the Chronicle. Or also there'll be stuff on social media next week as well. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.